So TEST2 was a, a large academic trial um, funded by the British Heart Foundation and the Stroke Association in the UK that we, we ran uh, involving 40 hospitals across the UK. Uh, and we were comparing to next place uh, a new thrombolytic drug for the stroke world, at least. Uh, we're using it at a dose of 0 0.25 milligrams per kilo and comparing that with our current standard of care treatment of alteplase, which we've, we've had around in the same dose for some 30 odd years now, uh, we've had some recent trial results which have suggested that tenecteplase at this dose is statistically non-inferior to alteplase. And if that were established to be the case, that would bring significant potential benefits to stroke patients, particularly because tenecteplase is far easier to administer um, alteplase requires giving an initial bolus dose and then following it up with a maintenance infusion running for an hour. And that introduces the potential that you have delays between giving the bolus and starting the maintenance infusion and therefore potentially losing efficacy. It's also problematic for managing patients in an era when we're frequently moving people through hospitals or between hospitals to have thrombectomy procedures and the monitoring of infusion pumps as well as the staffing required to, to deliver that is a significant barrier. In some parts of the world, it's, it's a significant resource implication because you may not have available infusion pumps in sufficient numbers or staff to monitor them. So tenecteplase, even if non-inferior, would have significant advantages. So the trial, we, we randomized patients uh, as they presented to hospital. We were looking at people within four and a half hours of onset of stroke, which is the, the internationally accepted um, time window for treating people. Um, people were allocated one to one to either get tenecteplase or get alteplase. And treatment started as quickly as possible after we, we identified that they were eligible. The, the randomization happened with an online uh, online system, uh, voice response system. So you phoned up, were allocated to treatment, and, and uh, we were allowed to randomize people anytime. A randomized, and we were allowed to randomize to treatment at any point from consent through to, to when we started treatment. In order to minimize any delays to treatment, we didn't always have brain imaging acquired before we randomized. We expected there would be a few people excluded following randomization on the basis of brain scanning, which was, was the case. The, the trial ran for quite some time. We started in 2017. Uh, we had an interruption for COVID. Uh, and then we resumed recruitment following that, but obviously in the context of a lot of disruption to health services. Um, but despite that, we, we recruited uh, 1,858 patients over the course of, of um, seven years in, in, in total. Uh, and after excluding people who uh, had screening failure because of brain imaging findings predominantly, we, we ended up with... Um, 885 patients in the tenecteplase group and 891 in the alteplase group. And we followed them up with a telephone contact 90 days approximately after randomization to see what the outcome was. When we looked at the results, we were looking at the distribution of disability on the modified ranking scale. Uh, and we saw that that uh, distribution in general favoured tenecteplase. When we looked at the statistical comparison of all categories of disability across the scale, um, we saw that, that this was confirmed to be statistically non-inferior to alteplase and a highly significant result, which fitted in with our predefined margins. Uh, the result was not quite superior to alteplase, which was our secondary level of analysis. And when we looked at the the results splitting the ranking scale into common ways of, of defining good outcomes. So we looked at ranking the scores of zero and one, which is uh, typically excellent outcome, people who have symptoms only. We saw again about a 2% absolute difference in favour of tenecteplase, which was again statistically non-inferior, again not meeting the criteria for being superior. We saw the same in terms of the rank and scale zero to two outcome, um, which is independent recovery, where we saw about a 3.4% absolute difference in the proportion 
making that recovery with tenecteplase, uh, tested only for superiority and not quite superior. So the conclusion overall was that we established non-inferiority um, and we saw evidence that we were moving in the direction of potential benefit of tenecteplase over altaflase. We we also looked at, at secondary outcomes and safety outcomes. We didn't have all of the data completed for the trial presentation, so there will be more to follow. The safety outcomes showed slightly lower mortality in the tenecteplase arm, but slightly higher numbers of hemorrhages, both in the head and outside the head. Um, but none of this was statistically different between the two arms of the trial. It's, a, it's purely an issue of numbers, I think. The, the direction of the effects are all going in favour of tenecteplase. That was also the case with previous comparable trials. Uh, and if you put together the aggregate results from all of the, the trials that have looked at this dose of tenecteplase head-to-head -head against altoplase together, um, putting them together crudely in a meta-analysis, you do come out with a, an odds ratio in favour of superiority of tenecteplase for the Rankin 01 outcome, or if you exclude trials which used a, a biocopy tenecteplase molecule where we're not certain of the direct bioequivalence, um, you get a similarly significant benefit if you're looking at Rankin 02 outcomes. So I think it, it is just that the effect size is a little smaller than we might have guessed from the, the very early trials, which is often the case, um, and therefore the the statistical power that we, we need to show such a difference is not there in any individual trial. When you put together the aggregate results, when you have thousands of patients across several trials, uh, I think it, it is very strongly suggesting that. Now, we'll, we'll do that more formally uh, as part of a pooling project where we'll put together all of the individual patient data from the trials and see if we can formally make that comparison and that allows us to adjust for differences, including different severity of patients, the different age groups, the different use of thrombectomy across the different studies and things of that kind, which you need to, to adjust for. So that, that, that's something we, we're working on at the moment and which we hope to have available in the, the not too far future.